Well, hello. Welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. I'm uh, videoing for the first time back in Newport Beach in the early part of the summer. As you know, uh, these have been being broadcast from New York City all summer, and I, I alluded last week in our Dividend Cafe uh, online that we were coming back to California, and uh, it's been a really productive week, a lot of, a lot of uh, fun things going on. Um, and a lot of interesting things happening in the markets as well, but, but I don't think people watching Dividend Cafe care where we're taping from, but I will just say it is nice to be back in Newport Beach, back with my team. Let's talk about the market this week, though. Um, you know, there, there is kind of a, a fundamental, evergreen, timeless principle I want to share right now that um, I write about a little further at DividendCafe.com this week, but... The uh, principle is very important, and I want you to hear it, and then I'm going to sort of contradict it, but you'll see why I'm not really contradicting it in, in a second. It is absolutely paramount that clients of ours understand, I would say it to non-clients as well, but I don't have the same fiduciary responsibility to people who are not clients of, of me and my team as I do those who are within our, our uh our domain of duty and responsibility. Um, I think we work tirelessly to be very, very well-versed and informed and competently prepared on matters pertaining to capital markets, the economy, investment opportunity, um, the various things that are moving the needle and how asset classes perform, making calculated decisions usually around risk-reward trade-offs to what we want to do to execute on behalf of clients. I actually think we work harder at that than any financial advisory team I've ever been around, ever seen, and I've been around quite a few. But I will say, as I've said many, many times, that the fundamental driver of a client's investment outcome uh, will come down to their behavioral disposition, the decisions they make. Uh, their avoidance of the big financial mistakes. Um, I think that when one looks at the uh, uh, propensity in human nature to overreact in, in um, matters of fear and concern and, and to overreact in matters of euphoria and opportunity and this quote-unquote greed factor, that, that virtually every mistake I've ever seen that actually undermined one's financial well-being came down to one of those things. Um, so to the extent that we spend a lot of time focused around the um, uh, intellectual aspect of portfolio management that can never be understood to be trumping the temperamental and the behavioral aspect. And so as we come into the period of time we're in, there's been a lot of anxiety throughout this entire bull market, and there's going to be more anxiety. Um, we had a ridiculously compressed level of volatility for a very long time, and I'm convinced over the last month now that you get a couple little things popping and all of a sudden the markets do want to respond a bit. There's nothing abnormal about that. There's something very abnormal about the absence of that. But I don't believe that anybody is going to say, North Korea is going to play out this way, the Fed's balance sheet is going to play out this way, Trumpian policy is going to do this or that, valuations are going to find their equilibrium here, and so therefore let's turn these knobs to be exactly positioned in such and such a way and get all of that right. I think that what people will do is either... Uh, maintain the proper discipline around a well-allocated portfolio, avoid uh, panicking, avoid um, overreacting to certain gyrations. Um, they will either uh, uh, play into the illusion of uh, market timing or they will not. So you will see um, outcomes in the months, quarters, and years ahead that will be determined by behavior and not by um, completely precise positioning. So I said there was going to be a little contradiction. What I mean is that now I want to answer 
why I think the market was down over 200 points on Tuesday of this week, which is, which is uh, definitely contradictory in theory to everything I'm talking about, because one measly day in the market obviously means nothing, and, and I stand by that. However, I am not um, going to answer this because I care. I'm answering it to make the point that nobody has any idea why the market was down 200 points on on Tuesday. The, the notion people say, well, it was clearly North Korea ge geopolitical risk. This crazy madman's talking about nuclear war. Of course, you expect markets to go down a bit. Well, first of all, let me point something out. If markets really thought that we were going to nuclear war, I kind of think it'd be more than 200 points. All right, so you're, you're talking about just a meaningless amount of money in the grand scheme of things, not even 1% of value over supposedly a nuclear war threat. But it absolutely makes no sense that emerging market bonds in surrounding countries to North Korea were all up. In, uh, in the, the, not only Tuesday, but in this whole period of time of this escalated North Korean volatility. So if, if supposedly there's an investor appetite to decrease risk in their U.S. equities and high-yield bonds and things of that nature, risk assets, because of North Korea geopolitical risk, does it not strike anyone as a little odd that there's been an increased level of risk appetite in like the countries next door to North Korea? The reality is, is that whether it's Hurricane Harvey, which on Tuesday they said was, oh, all the hurricane aftermath, which has just been brutal, is hurting markets. Then on Wednesday, markets were up and they go, yeah, this is probably because of Hurricane Harvey because now we have increased uh, energy market uh, uh, rebuild. And, and so I, I guess as long as the same news on one day is the cause of bad uh, news and the next day is cause of good news, you, if, you're gonna, if you're willing to have that kind of incoherent and inconsistent ideology and in, in understanding capital markets, you can conclude anything. But here's what we know. We do not know. The market has never been so kind as to tell us what makes it do something one day and, and something different the next day. What we do know is that inflation expectations, earnings surprises, currency fluctuation, market sentiment, interest rate movement, central bank activity, there is a wide array of fundamental factors that drive markets in a particular period of time through all of even those things, ultimately profits of underlying companies drive stock prices. We do know those things. We do know that those things don't necessarily matter hour by hour, day by day, and oftentimes not even for entire quarters of time. But I think this is a very important lesson in the period we're in right now. Um, there are plenty of things right now that I think represent a headwind for the market. Plenty of things that represent a tailwind. You have a bond market right now that is giving two very uh, conflicting signals. Very low bond yields, which is all systems go for risk assets. People love borrowing cheap money to buy riskier assets. And money's cheap. And yet the bond rates, bond yields are so low because inflation is so low. It's a good backdrop for stock market. But um, the, the growth expectations are higher, and the bond market is not believing that. So there's some tension points out there. We're going to keep navigating, keep monitoring. But what we're not going to do is let clients make really crazy decisions around it, piling on risk at the wrong time or piling on fear at the wrong time. That's all I really have for you this week. I've kind of gone on for a long time about it. This is an important lesson. Uh, this, To me, everything I've talked about this week is a big deal. Um, please do read DividendCafe.com, though, because we, have, we cover a lot of stuff going on with Japan and our thinking around this Japan process that we've not yet acted on. We do talk more about emerging markets. We do talk more about interest rate environment. So uh, please uh, feel free to reach out with any questions you have. Have a wonderful weekend. And go USC beat Stanford. Thanks for listening.